This is a student that passed away at your uh, university uh, and, and was murdered. Uh, what is the university actually asking for in terms of justice being served here? Thank you very much, Matsako, um, and uh, thanks for inviting us to speak on, on, on this very, uh, very painful, very hurtful uh, subject for, for, for us. The student, as you said, was, was killed in a very brutal manner and was then uh, decapitated. The body was then decapitated and, 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 and carved up in, and put in a suitcase and other containers and dumped on the streets in East London. Mm -hmm. Now, there, there are several things that need to flow from, from, from this. First of all, justice has got to take its full course. Uh, the perpetrator must be held to account and must go through a proper and rigorous process uh, uh, through the courts. Mm -hmm. uh, it, so the best thing for people like this is to make sure that they help to account very fully. That's the first thing. But the second thing is this, that, that the area where this took place is Quigney, a part of East London that's run down, which is, which is where the drug dens are, which is where all the criminality happens. And unfortunately, we're stuck as a university, we're stuck because virtually all the residences that we lease for the university are in that area. Mm. The authorities know about this. Everybody knows about this. The city knows about this. And again, I'm not saying this in a finger pointing way, but I'm saying that what needs to happen from now on is that we as a university, the municipality, the provincial authorities, the national government, the police, the law enforcement authorities need to come together. We need to sit down and say, how do we move, move forward? We can't continue with criminality in a place which is dedicated, which is a precinct for, 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 for learning for teaching and learning. As I should say, add a, a second point uh, here, that all the residences that we use in East London are not owned by the university. So they are, they're owned by somebody else, we list them, and we're going to be talking to the, our National Department of Higher Education and Training so that we can start building our own, our own uh, uh, residences where we have control, where we can have and a, a degree of security for these students that are entrusted to us. So I'll, I'll, that's, that's what needs to flow from now on. And there's more I can talk about. Yes. Uh, Prof, I'm going to come back to you. I just want to bring in the MEC of Social Development in the Eastern Cape. Hopefully uh, she can hear me. Sipogazi Mani Lusiti. Uh, MEC, your reaction to this, and, and I mean, I'm, I'm hoping you can hear the professor. He says that they are, um, you know, they have to uh, register or approve those residents who are uh, who, that are in Quigney. And he says that's a problematic area. Officials know about it. They know that Forte has students living there. What are we doing about that area? in Quigney, especially because students live there, young women live there? I can. Um, I, I, I hope you can hear me too. And unfortunately, I, did, I could not hear the professor from where, from where I'm seated. Mm -hmm. But indeed, we were equally heartbroken um, by the incident and the death of Nosizela. And it was, it was more so because it showed the brutality and the increase in brutality um, in, the, in the cases of gender-based violence. Well, as government, indeed, the, 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 we have efforts in the fight against gender-based violence. We are contributing in the pillar form on the national strategic plan and gender-based violence in the province is increasing and is a priority such that it is coordinated in the area in the office of the of, of the premier now we are working with the department of safety and liaising and the department of justice because it we it can it's not acceptable that all these cases and all these victims, they don't seem to be receiving justice within the, the, the legal framework um, of South Africa, but the Department of Justice Safety um, is coming on board. Now, the area, the area that you mentioned, Professor, is speaking about, mm. then we are working with campuses in Forte included in our Safer Campus Programme. Now, this needs both of us um, as government, the private sector, and the university to come on board. Now, the problem with Quigley is that the institution can't account in terms of where are the students registered um, in for 10 are residing. Because 
I will know that we had to intervene um, at one point where students were kicked out of land law by their landlords because they could not pay their accommodation with all the delays in NEFSAs. Now, all those things, they reflect how as a society, we are failing our young girls we are failing our children, especially those that are coming from poor background um, in, in, in their pursuit of education and better life. Mm, MEC, I mean, uh, this week also, we are going to be observing the, uh, you know, the, the, that day that Uyine uh, Mkwekiana was also murdered by um, that man from the uh, post office. And now there's this girl as well, Uno Stelo. I mean, this is something that is not changing. And I mean, uh, you know, the, it's profound because it's happening on Women's Month. Um, indeed, it is. Now, the issue for us is that with, 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 with the coordination and between and, collab and the collaboration with all the efforts in the fight against gender-based violence, we have to move beyond just talking about it. And we have to move to a more proactive approach uh, in the fight against gender-based violence. And that's why, as a department and as the Eastern Cape government, we are investing more um, in economic development opportunities for, our, for, for, for women, for the youth, because we believe that developing and bringing economic opportunities will also help as, as a preventative measure against gender-based violence. But secondly, is that the, our program with the House of Traditional Leaders and the men's sector ensures that we target the potential perpetrator, our young men, our young boys that are still at school, in order to enforce the positive behavioral changes. But the other thing we believe is that the family unit is central in, in, in our approach to, 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 to change and fight the various social ills and the growing social crimes in our society. Building a solid um, family unit where family plays its responsibility will go a long way. But mm -hmm. also when we're talking about family units, it's not only a mother and a father. We have a program, English Banner Program, where we are mobilizing, vetting, and training potential foster parents. That will give these young people the necessary love, the discipline, the care, and the sense of family. That in that way, we believe that we will go a long way in preventing future incidences of gender-based violence. But mm -hmm. also, the society has a role to play. Because what we saw after the incident of Uno Sitela and the comments on social media, which really made, um, made, 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 gave an impression that a life of a person does not matter, and how we think lightly of, of, of gender-based violence and the killing of women is something that we should not be tolerated, and it's something that needs mm -hmm. all of us to fight against. Okay, MEC, I'm just, I just want to bring in Professor uh, Sakela Mshlungu there again. Uh, Prof, I don't know if you have or if the university has been able to get a hold of uh, Nostelo's family. Uh, maybe you can tell us how they are doing after this brutal murder. I mean, honestly, uh, murder is already too much, but to be dismembered and then stuffed in a suitcase. Thank you very much uh, once again. Unfortunately, I couldn't hear uh, my, the, the, the something with sound, the problem with sound. I couldn't hear what the MEC was saying at all. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, uh, just very, very briefly, and I, I hope we, I can go back to this because this is the bigger part of what I want to say, uh, mm -hmm. is, 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 about, is about the fact that this is Women's Month. That when we started this month, we declared this month as a month to celebrate visionary women, especially Fort Herians, uh, alumni of the university. And we had started that, and we are kind of in full swing with those preparations and events and so on. And only for this to happen, to happen now. I mean, it's become, it's become almost kind of customary now that Women's Month, you know, we get into it with great fanfare, only to find a string of, of incidents of gender-based violence taking place during that very same month. And all of a sudden, every year, it's as if we're waking up for the first time. It's as if we didn't know that there was gender-based violence out there. And for me, that's a, that. And for us as a university, that's what we we find extremely frustrating. There's so much that we can do as a university. There's so much that we can do internally within our residences, within our own campuses. 
But frankly, we need to now get up. If it means we have a meeting on Monday to deal with these issues with the authorities, let's do so. Gender-based violence is there 365 days a year. And so I'm, I'm not, I'm, not I'm, I'm, I'm one person who's not convinced by all this kind of talk about programs, this and programs that we know men commit violence against women all the time. And this is one case. And once again, we'll wake up when the, the, the UCT, Uinen and Kweja, nothing happens. Also happened, I think, in, during Women's Month. Mm -hmm. And here again, Nocitello is a, a thing happens during Women's Month. We wake up again. But there are many others. There's a case in Limpopo right now of another young woman who's fallen victim to gender-based violence. We, we paying lip service to it. I'm extremely frustrated. And I, we, as a university, we really, really extremely frustrated. Of course, we I also understand this is a moment of warning, uh, mourning for us. We have declared Wednesday, uh, this coming, as a day of mourning for the university. We've suspended university operations on the day. We're going to have a memorial service with as many role players as possible to, to deliberate on these things, to honor Nos, Nos, Nos Taylor, but also to deliberate on the bigger issue, gender-based violence. Uh, but Seho, two years ago, I was, I was on a ENCA checkpoint. I was on the spot about what we were doing as, as the University of Forte on gender-based violence. And during that interview, we committed that we're going to adopt a policy, we're going to crack down on gender-based violence on campus, and we've been doing exactly that on campus. But mm -hmm. a case such as Nostello, a, a, a place of residence which is outside of our control, these things happen. And of course, it, it happens in Quigney. Of course, if, if, if everybody knows that Quigney is a drug den. It's a, it's a place of violence, mm -hmm. 24 hours a day, uh, and so on. Now, but back to the question, to the immediate question. We, we, we uh, fortunately, from the word go, we worked very closely with SAPS, with the police. Uh, we shared information, we shared uh, uh, plans, we shared uh, kind of ideas. They, uh, they were the first ones to get to Nostello's family in Matatiel, and uh, we linked up with the family immediately. The family is arriving tomorrow. We're receiving the family tomorrow. Uh, we've ma made arrangements for accommodation for the family tomorrow and other forms of assistance and other logistical assistance, which are, I will not detail here. And we are ve hoping very much that members of the family, at least some members of the family, will join us during the memorial ser service on, 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 on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And um, as I say, we're doing all of these things. We're working with the family. We're treating these matters very delicately. We only shared the information once we were comfortable that the family was was informed and was was on board, and they they come to terms with with this kind of horrid uh, mm. kind of incident. Mm. But yes, we we are there. But, but once again, I just want to underline: gender-based violence is not going to be eradicated at the pace we're going, in the way we're going. The way we're going about small patchwork programs, we're not going to deal with it. We need to deal with these kids. These kids, these boys come from homes. They come from families. Mm. They have parents. They have mothers and fathers. They know they, have, oh. they come from community. Yes, Surely. Yeah, you're absolutely they don't correct, Prof. You're absolutely yeah, correct. Yeah. And I, I just want to bring the MEC in. MEC, I don't have a lot of time, but I agree fully with the, prof with the professor. And I, I know you, you might not have heard him, but uh, basically what he's saying is that there's a lot of lip service when it comes to uh, gender-based violence. We always wake up when something happens and we call departments such as yours, etc. There's policies, uh, th things written on paper, and they look good, they sound good, but it doesn't look like anything is being done, MEC, even by government. You know, actually, I agree with you when you say a lot of lip service has been paid on it, but they are programs. And the issue is that currently, the programs are only, are only being run by a small corner which is would be government with all their limited resources now where are the institutions of higher learning in the everyday fight against gender-based violence um where is the where is the private sector beyond just the, the messaging uh, on the 16 days of activism the fight against gender-based violence it needs all of us. Every day we are dealing with incidences of gender-based violence. Every day we are supporting and providing psychosocial support 
to, to, to households and mothers who've lost their daughters. Indeed, it is enough. And the, 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 our, the approach to the fight of gender-based violence is not only one size fits all. It is quite um, multidimensional. Hence, it needs us to target the family and strengthening the family unit will have an impact in the, in the kind of a man you are going to bring up one day. Now, that is not a small problem by any any measure. Now, mm. lastly, the issue of the safety of our children is our all our responsibility. And when we are saying the safety of our children and the safer campus, we're not talking about a child when they are in class. But when the when a, when a parent entrusts a child to an institution, it is equally their their responsibility. And indeed, it does need a collaboration. It does need consolidated effort towards the one goal because mm. government can't do it enough we don't have mm. nearly enough resources and that's why we always fall short but we need everyone to come on board and definitely mm. um inviting the, the the institution so that our um, the, the the safer campus does not only um become an event and a few meetings and a few awareness campaign but the mm. university can really come on board in ensuring that it moves beyond that, but it's a year-long program that only that not only seeks to bring awareness, but to change behavior okay. and bring about positive behavior in the right. students and the surrounding community.